So first of all, good evening to everyone here tonight. So what we are going to be talking about tonight is how to go a make how to go about making our lives exceptional. Nowadays, regardless of whether it is in Asia or in the worst in, in the West, for urban dwellers everywhere, many people experience difficulties at the level of their minds. And for people living in these cities across the world, their standard of living is becoming increasingly of the same level or standard. And the living standards or lifestyles of people in these urban settings has reached a relatively high standard in many aspects. But in order to achieve lives that are materially of a high standard in all aspects, it's necessary for us to expend a lot of effort and work very hard. And when we have to work hard in order to achieve these lifestyles, uh, this has a great impact on our minds. Uh, in terms of what constitutes a good life or a life that is one that is full of meaning or a life that is a life of achievement, the uh, ways that people think about this are becoming increasingly similar, that is increasingly homogenous. <laughs> And for many people, uh, their idea of a good life is one that is materially abundant. So, uh, in terms of the level that uh, everyone aspires to reach, um, everyone uh, tends to aspire to a very high level. Something a bit less is doesn't really even exist. And uh, everyone then tends to uh, aspire for an increasingly high level of living standard. But as to what the highest uh, level of living standard or highest kind of lifestyle is, uh, the absolute pinnacle 
what this would be is not is not something that any of us could say. Then you also go lipoda, also go sims and in mutila tindi and yindos. So one's body and one's mind, uh, a human is constituted by both of these things. Then you also go lipula tindi goyate, munitanishana pe mambos go mendos. And in terms of the needs of our physical bodies, uh, honestly speaking, their needs are not too many. Zaya, Gunya, then he pishot Naya, Mubo Gandang, Gangina, then he got so Lipundi, Korangatini, Ndopa, De Paratini, Karkunguna, Ndopakunguna, De Halepagatini, Kavli, Chimbuti, Di Mares. So in terms of our basic needs of having food to eat, clothes to wear, and basic things to use, to meet or fulfill these needs isn't something that is particularly difficult. Uh, for example, when we eat, uh, we will be sated for at least a few hours. Uh, and uh, during after we've eaten, we don't feel a feeling of hunger. And uh, once we drink a glass of water, then in terms of our physical thirst, it is satisfied. And uh, but in fact, what we really need to be diligent about and to work hard uh, at doing is satisfying the desires of our mind. Or rather, not that we need to be doing this, but this is in fact what we, what we do spend most of our time doing, satisfying the needs of our mind. However, our minds don't have basic levels like our body that are easy to, uh, easy to satisfy. But our physical bodies do have these uh, limits, uh, limits where we uh, can consider ourselves to have satisfied our particular physical needs. Simkundopakunya <laughs> So these external things like uh, food or various objects uh, for satisfying or fulfilling the needs of our physical bodies and uh, not our minds. Uh, food for our mind is of a uh, different kind. That is, our minds require a different kind of food. So, uh, the food for our bodies are things like the food we eat, the water we drink, the air we breathe. And uh, there is corresponding food that our mind requires. And our minds also do need food. They require food. But as to what the food or foods that our bodies need, this is something that we are all very sure of. So 
But as to what the foods are that our minds require, this is something that none of us really have a good understanding of. Then it is similar than it go go yore, you know, gari go yo nothing as me mambo hako mandugo. So our minds do need these things, but what are the things that we need? This is something that we, we don't understand. Then the ending are so sure good in your mumbo mambo, then you are so ne. Then it dealer, then you are so sim dealer, Koranga din in dopa, Kanga, or then the younger is something at me mambo, then you some good. Many people think that accumulating a great deal of external things will enable us to fulfill the desires of our mind. But this is a mistaken way of thinking. Uh, the reason uh, that this is a mistaken way of thinking is that these external things have uh, no possibility uh, of fulfilling the needs of our mind. So what we need to satisfy uh, the needs of our mind is something different to uh, external things. But as to what this alternative thing or these alternative things are, many people really have no idea. So, with our uh, fix, fixated constantly on material things, thinking that material things will bring us wellness, we expend a great deal of energy, we work very hard. But even though we may work hard uh, in accumulating or acquiring uh, material or external things, there will never be a point where uh, they are able to make us satisfied such that we think, okay, it's enough, I'm content, it's okay. So this way of thinking really uh, serves as the basis for the lifestyle of many people in contemporary cities today. And many people not being able to attain a particular level of material lifestyle think that their own lives are completely valueless. Uh, so there are people who do not have uh, a particularly um, well-off level of material lifestyle. So not only is it these people who uh, don't uh, have enjoy a particular standard of material living who aspire 
to uh, to to this kind of lifestyle and feel discontent. But also people already who already have a reasonably good level of material lifestyle still feel not satisfied. They feel that they have not yet arrived at the level of lifestyle they would like to enjoy and so they feel that they are... Um, not people of competence and ability. They feel that they don't have value and their minds give rise to a lot of difficulties in this way. But in actual fact, this is far from the case that these people are without value. Whoever, whichever person in the world, every single person, if they understand how to make use of their inherent potentials, uh, can be people who possess a great deal of value. <laughs> When we uh, tend to evaluate whether or not uh, a life is good or bad or full of value or without value, usually we're only looking at it from one perspective. Then in Mang Chi Shute, then in Zambolonga, then in Tungirkanala, you'll be me Mang Chi Shute, Damka Chingda, or Matomanduxi. And for the majority of people living in cities today, there is only one choice in this regard. One path. And this one path or this uh, one approach is one of accumulating a great deal of material things and seeking through by this means to satisfy the needs of their minds. In actual fact, many people, in terms of their uh, material needs, um, have already satisfied what they uh, really need. In terms of uh, those things that we actually need to use in our lives, um, it's really a very simple matter. Whether we uh, live a life that is quite simple uh, and convenient, or rather a life that is uh, very complicated, uh, materially speaking, is of no uh, difference to our physical bodies. It makes no difference to them whether we satisfy them in a very simple way or, or through complicated means. The difference really exists at the level of our minds. So if we actually think about it carefully, then we can see that and look at the matter of our everyday lives in an open-minded way. Then we can see that all of that which we struggle in respect of and work so hard in respect of in our everyday lives, we think is oriented towards the needs of our physical survival, but in actual fact, uh, it's all oriented to satisfying the desires of our minds. So in respect of this issue, there's a few things that we need to pay attention to. 
তিনি তাম্বু কেজে না আচু মিন সোয়াজে তিনি লো লোক চিক বন্ধাও তিনি সে নি রেজি নামজিন তিনি আচু তিনি সোয়া তেলা লিপু উন সোয়া তিনি সেম গুন সোয়াজে নি সরোসে গোদ So usually the way that we approach life is in terms of a kind of compound entity but in actual fact we our human life is made up of a physical component and a psychological or spiritual component Tani perna ngatu tsungkhang ka nanglan drone tani chalak zata nge tena nyol go sambandra o tindi go samlo shonaze So if we were to say give rise to the thought that oh I need to go to a shop today and buy some things তিনি তি কাপসে তিনি জালকে লিপো লাগো ও তিনি নাচু তিনি গোম্বা ও তিনি গো সামনে তিনি সামলো কে ও কাপসে তিনি আসো ও সামলো তানে ও দি গারঙ্গুনে সেমলা গো সাম সেম গুন সোয়ালা গুন্দা গারঙ্গ গুবু সোয়ালা গুন্দ সামনে সামলো তান গুন্দ So when say we uh, think to buy a watch or perhaps an expensive bag or particular clothes then we should think to ourselves these things that i want to buy are they for meeting the needs of my mind or are they for for meeting the needs of my physical self then i got thing around lipula goya thing is reona then you need to need to go re thing as you go re if it is uh, for the needs of our body our physical needs then yes we should buy it we if we really need it So if we're thirsty we should buy some water. We can't just say oh I'm thirsty doesn't matter. We need to buy the water to quench the thirst. Sambandra uh, wotindi kap kap se yong kares. But uh, sometimes, but uh, in respect of clothes, for example, uh, we might uh, come to think that uh, we don't need to buy the clothes, given that we already have a lot old ones, new ones, uh, clothes of different kinds. Then ngat so chikshi na mi mambo wotindi ku ku jaksa nala, tindi ku sarwa tindi ku tangma yang mar len men keng tindi ku mambo tindi jaksa yor. It's possible that in everyone's wardrobes there are many uh, new clothes that are still on the hangers with their tags not yet removed. Tani lok hashi tani yang kombati so yang tani ta mi mambo tani mukunya or shisokotola tatur chimbo me pa tani chandro ndus. And uh, after a few years many people no longer wear these clothes they become unfashionable. তিনি তি কাপস তিনি কোম্বাতে সোলায়ং গুবা চিম্বো মেপান রাও চাংডো দস ইন হুইচ কেস দিস ক্লোজ বিকাম উইদাউট ইউস তিনি তা তিনটি কোম্বা মম্বো জ তিনি জাংলা ইউনা তিনি নে তারুং আরং কোম্বা নিউ গোন্দ সামবাতে তিনি অ তানতে আরং লিপু উন সোয়ালা গয়া রেমন্দু আরং সেম গুন সোয়ালা গয়া রেমন্দু সামবা হাগো গোরিস So in a situation like this when one already has uh many clothes then when one comes to think of buying still more clothes then uh we should realize that what we are seeking to do is not satisfy our immediate physical needs but rather the desire of our minds. Then semla ti khoran ga ji go sam ga du te te ne ngaran ran ga ngun ni tane ina then semla te ji girchu gyabna then the khoran lam sam mur go ya rendo re So even though our mind says that they want something if we are able to make uh, a few changes to our mind then immediately our minds no longer uh, give rise to this wanting Then the ending also lipu on so at an same gun so a gangla go yo tindi e wa ma shi bi gimsen ji tani nam yin na chalak pe mangbo tindi nyo yo re But 
usually on account of the fact that we are not able to clearly distinguish between our physical needs and the needs of our mind, we uh, buy and accumulate a lot of things. Some people even spend thousands of American dollars on a rubbish bin. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, expenditure like this, is this uh, in order to satisfy our physical needs or in order to satisfy the needs of our mind? Uh, what does everyone think? Yeah. <laughs> 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 Yeah, yes. 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 It's clearly uh, in order to satisfy the needs of our minds uh, in terms of a. Uh, place to throw our rubbish, it doesn't matter whether the bin costs $50 or $10 or $1,000, it's all the same. However, at the beginning, because one has a rather expensive rubbish bin, uh, one feels in one, one's mind like a bit of a superior person, and uh, the feeling in <laughs> one's mind at the beginning, at any rate, is rather happy. However, our, we don't, uh, generally speaking, understand, or we're not generally speaking, aware of the natural pattern of our mind. But of all of the changes uh, within and amidst us, that which gives rise to the biggest and fastest changes is our mind. In the course of a human life, between the time that a person is a child and when they become an, an, an old person, uh, a great deal of changes take place. Uh, however, there are also uh, very conspicuous changes that take place even within a five-year period. Uh, usually within, say, one or two years, the changes that take place are not so necessarily so clear to us. However, within just the space of one hour, the changes that take place at the level of our minds are extremely many. They are extremely rapid. Uh, so, uh, for example, a uh, rubbish bin that uh, costs $5,000, immediately upon purchase we may like it. However, it's possible that even within an hour after purchasing it, we will be giving rise to regret in our minds. <laughs> And so our minds really change so fast. Then 
probably many of you uh, do running on a on a running machine or a jogger. Then you call Harley, but then in Jobon call we capsu, then you must have gone back a Kujila Mali, but then it's a young girl. And it's like when you are running on a running machine that is spinning so fast that you can't keep up with it. Then you call out in Jobon call and ask a combate, the tambo to Arizona, then you must have look at it. And when it moves so fast, if our mind, if our legs become uh, a little still and don't keep up with it, then we'll fall off the machine. Then you got the answer, come back up on the machine, caught on the rubbish in the gignan, then you got the answer, come back up on the machine, caught on the rubbish in the gignan. However, if we uh, try to keep up with the rate that the machine is spinning, then our bodies become extremely exhausted. Then you got the answer, come back up on the machine. So uh, in that case, what what should we do? Then you also then you come back to all your feet. Then you take a step, take a step, take a step, take a step. What we need to do is make the jogging machine, the uh, the belt on the on the running machine, turn a little slower. Then you need to also same like this, turn some shit go your ass. In order to do this, we need to be able to control our minds a little bit. Then you me mambo ta ta. Uh, regardless of whether it's the east or west, there are a lot of people who exist with a great deal of anger. Then it's also wrong to talk control language with Kim Jong Un. And anger towards themselves. What is the reason for this? Then you got to learn to talk. Then you got to go same para yang ya. Or that the individual, the same, the same kind of land, do pan ramada kia, the individual, the shawayan na, the nguboyan na, the ha leba, ni mari re cemang 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 rawi aris. Ah, the reason for this is that in everyone's midst, their desires, desires uh, uh, in relation to material objects and things of uh, all different kinds, just continue to grow and grow in number. The ni. And with as our mind uh, chases after each of these various objects and things, our mind goes uh, chasing in all different kinds of directions. And this makes our minds very tired. And t-shirt as a result of this, uh, there are many uh, things that we think So with our minds becoming distracted and chasing after uh, various kinds of things, they become very tired and uh, we are then not able to um, complete the tasks that we need to be doing. So so rang the thing the leka le goya the so the so matter the leka le goya the so le matter the thing the reason the thing is same nala the thing joba mumbo chere or is. And then when we are not actually able to complete those things that we should be doing, our minds give rise to uh, feelings of regret. Yen na the thing joba mumbo chere na same la the thing chun zun shi tap goya mar. But even though our minds are, are giving rise to regret about this, we're still not able to control them. Then you send Sunzun Shi Matam Yang, then you Leka Mambo, Leka Legoya, Leka Mambo Shur, or then you send Leka Nasutinichu, that Lim Juperna, and now Yang Leka, or then you Leka Lim Munyamba, or then you Leka Yapu Mayamba, or the Sogonala, Sim Shur, the Sogonala, then you Tindi Rayang, Tindi Rendoti, Namjin, Terang, and Tindi Sanyi, and Tindi Yama Mambo Tindi Sundi, this is also Rangatola Kunturang. And uh, when we are not able to control our minds, 
and not able to do the things we need to do and keep uh, missing the opportunities to complete them, then uh, when this pattern accumulates over the course of many days, our anger arises in ourselves. So, in addition to giving rise to anger, uh, due to our inability to properly control our minds, uh, we then give rise to thoughts of uh, being people of no ability, of no competence, and we generate a kind of inferiority complex. And this kind of phenomenon is uh, taking place everywhere among uh, city dwellers in the east, in the west, everywhere this kind of thing is observable. But this isn't just a phenomenon that afflicts one or two people. It's really a mass phenomenon that has uh, spread everywhere. So the first thing that we need to do is properly distinguish the lives or needs that correspond with our physical selves and our psychological or spiritual selves. And then in terms of our mind, we need to give our minds those things that they really need. Uh, and if we're able to properly uh, distinguish between uh, our physical, the lives corresponding with our physical selves and uh, that corresponding with our minds, then it won't be so necessary for us to work so hard in uh, for our uh, our lifestyles. And um, it will be um, okay for us to simply pursue livelihoods that are a little bit more simple, a bit more convenient. So when we say convenient or si or chizati gangadang chizati gangadang damba. Mm. So by saying, talking about a simple or a straightforward lifestyle, uh, we are not meaning a lifestyle that is full of hardship or um, physical difficulty. Uh, but as we uh, said before, um, if it, something is uh, oriented to satisfying our physical needs, uh, then we should we should buy it if we need it. Uh, but if we can perceive that what we are seeking to buy is really to fulfill the needs of our minds, then we should have a bit of a think about it, whether we really uh, do need to go about buying it or not. Uh, frequently, our minds, uh, to begin with, they really uh, want uh, to purchase, to have a 
a uh, good kind of object or item. However, within one or two weeks, uh, our minds uh, change. They no longer uh, want these particular items. Uh, let's say, for example, that I uh, think a great deal about purchasing a watch like this and then uh, decide to spend a lot of money on it. Uh, for a period of about a week, my mind will be liking this watch very much. But slowly, slowly, after one week, uh, my mind will stop liking the watch so much. If uh, if our uh, minds uh, stopped liking the watch, then that's fine. But the problem is that for, at this moment, our minds immediately start to want or like other items. And uh, immediately tell, uh, says to itself or tell us that we must buy these things. And so uh, our minds want to buy new things again and again and again, and there is no point at which they are ever satisfied. This kind of desire we can uh, describe as ignorant desire. And by no means can we afford to chase after this kind of desire. Because if we do, in the course of our human lifetimes, we will experience no happiness whatsoever. And this reason or this logic is something that uh, uh, Buddhism understood a very long time ago. And so the Buddha Shakyamuni was the number one psychologist in the whole world. And as to what our minds need and how they change constantly, he had an uh, unbelievable insight into this. And so our minds, in terms of the way that they uh, change, uh, possess a natural pattern. For example, in what kind of environment uh, does our mind give rise to uh, certain changes? Uh, there is a pattern, uh, a pattern to this. Um, this pattern was something that the Buddha understood extremely clearly. And uh, what the uh, Buddha perceived very clearly 2,500 years ago is something that now 2,000 
500 years later in our contemporary society that is verified uh, by people in their experience. And so the reason that many people perceive themselves to be worthless and uh, feel angry towards themselves is precisely on account of the problematic nature of our minds. Is it the case that in actual fact our minds are as bad or deplorable as this? In the uh, course of our everyday lived experience, uh, or the minds that we experience in our everyday lives is like this. But is the mind that we have experience of in our everyday lives our real mind? Uh, the answer is no. The mind that we have experience of in our everyday lives is not our real mind. It's only the uh, surface of our real mind. It's like a pineapple. Uh, the outside of our mind is very prickly. If we rub it with our hands, it will be a bit prickly. But uh, inside the fruit, it is very soft and sweet. However, that uh, inner sweetness is not something that we're able to eat. Uh, we're not able to go within that depth of our mind. Uh, usually, uh, what we do is rub the outside of our mind and feel it to be prickly and decide it's not good and throw it away. Yeah. So, at this uh, point, what we really need to do is peel the skin off the fruit. Oh, it's like an egg. Yeah. And uh, the, uh, what do we call it, the shell of an egg is not something that we can eat. Uh, that which is, has a uh, true taste for us is uh, what lies within it. So, that mind that we have experience of in our everyday lives is just like the prickly skin of a pineapple or the hard shell of an egg. Uh, that for many people, or many people in the course of their entire lives, uh, they never see within their own minds. They only perceive the outside skin. For example, if a young child, uh, the moment it was being born from its mother, 
saw the sky with many clouds and a lot of rain. Tini dawa ni dawa sum go part tini tini charwa tak tang bad ni tini nyemasti jang masernas. So if uh, from this point onwards for a period of two or three months uh, there was only rain in the sky. The young child would think that uh, that was the way the sky was, that the sky was always full of clouds and rain. And if this situation continued for a period of one or two years, then the child would continue to think that the uh, sky was uh, only ever rainy because they never would have seen the sky in its blue state without clouds, uh, with sun and moon and things like this. But if one day the rain was to stop and the clouds were to part, then the child would finally be able to see, realize that the sky was like this, with a uh, shining sun, sun and a nice blue sky. So it's just like this. Uh, from the very moment that we are born from our mothers, that which we experience of our mind is only the external layer or surface. And uh, for many people, until the time that they die, they still only know the outer layer of their mind. They don't know uh, the inner layers. But these outer layers or the surface is not the depths of our mind. Uh, the value that everyone truly possesses is not uh, the value in or of their hands or legs or physical bodies. And uh, their real value is not the sounds that are spoken from their mouths. Our real value lies in the depths of our mind. And everyone has a mind. There is no one who does not have a mind. And everyone in the deeper layer of their mind is good. And so everyone li- everyone's lives for this reason are uh, have value or worth. And the reason that uh, people feel themselves to be valueless or bad is because they don't understand this value. Uh, so uh, what we need then to learn is a method for discovering this uh, deeper part of the mind. So how should we go about understanding or perceiving the deeper layer of our minds? If we say had a glass of water that 
uh, was filled the, with water that was uh, turbid, how should we go about making it pure? We don't need to do anything else. The water itself is able to purify itself. It has the capacity to make itself clean. Because even if this glass of water was turbid, full of dirt and everything, if we were to simply let it stand still and not touch it at all, then it would become pure of its own accord. However, if we were to move the glass of water to shake it with our hand, then it wouldn't be able to become Pure. And many many uh, the various external objects uh, that uh, exist in the world uh, continually shake and move our minds. They're just like a spoon that goes stirring or churning the water in the glass. And when this happens, it's just not possible for our minds to become pure or still. So what do we need to do in this case then? Well, we, nothing else is needed other than to simply set the glass still and let it become pure, uh, still itself. So what we can say then uh, is that we need then a method to help uh, prevent the various objects in the external world from churning up our minds. And uh, the method uh, that we need or can apply to achieve this is meditation. For example, this cup of water, if we were to let it uh, sit still for, say, five minutes or so, would become uh, quite clear. And if we were to leave it uh, still set still for another five minutes, then it would become even more clear. And if we were to uh, leave it even a longer period of time, then it would become really clear. So uh, we need to leave our minds in a way uh, where we are not uh, moving or poking or otherwise stirring them up. And by leaving our minds sit still in this state, then all of their various troubles and problems will gradually disappear. And uh, by doing this, it's, popular, it's possible for the turbid nature of our mind to gradually become extremely clear and clean. And in order to achieve this, there are many uh, different kinds and levels of meditation at our disposal. And uh, these different kinds of meditation are ones that we need to first study and learn about. Uh, as for 
uh, methods of meditation and methods for cleaning or purifying the mind, the tradition in the world with the uh, greatest number of methods is the Vajrayana uh, Buddhist tradition. And these methods are such that whatever one eats or what clothes one wears or the various other material enjoyments one has in one's life will be of um, will will not cause harm to any of this. So long as uh, the way that you live your life is uh, one that doesn't cause harm to others, then uh, whatever you have or possess, you can continue to enjoy. There's not one thing that you necessarily have to give up. Uh, and it is through these methods that one is able to experience the depth of one mi- one's mind, which is like uh, experiencing the sweet flesh of a pineapple or the inner part of the yolk of an egg. Once we uh, truly understand the deepest nature of our mind, then regardless of what kind of trouble or complexity we may find ourselves in, it will be able to, uh, these troubles immediately uh, will be um, able to be transcended. So once we are able to gain experience of the deepest uh, layer of our mind, then we are able to um, open up the uh, latent potentials of our mind. In the uh, depths of our mind are a great deal of potentials, and in gaining experience of the deepest layer of our mind, then we're able to begin to exploit those potentials. <laughs> If we think in terms of external objects, they uh, contain powers or potentials that really are inconceivable. And uh, the Buddha Shakyamuni uh, said in his teachings that the power of uh, such objects is truly inconceivable. However, at that point, uh, he, he was not clear of just how inconceivable the power of such objects would be in the 20th century. But in the 20th century, uh, just on the basis of uh, a uh, physical matter as tiny as an atom, uh, waste and destruction of a vast scale was made possible through the invention of nuclear weapons. This potential uh, was something that always existed. It existed a long time ago. It wasn't something that just came about in the 20th century. However, 
even though the potential uh, of the uh, of of very small atoms always existed because there was not the uh, technology available for exploiting this potential it didn't come into being and our minds have a latent potential or power which is comparable to this in their depths But the fact that in the depths of our mind we do have such potential is something that many people just don't know about. And most people are without a means or a method for exploiting uh, this potential that exists. So this uh, method for exploiting this inherent potential is one that we need to learn about. Uh, because if we are able to learn about this uh, method, then we will be able to uh, properly exploit and give rise to the full potential uh, of those latent potentials of our mind. At the present time, the way that we understand uh, richness or poverty is, tends to be defined by the amount of external or material objects that one possesses or doesn't possess. And of course, uh, wealth and poverty uh, does exist in this form uh, at the level of um, uh, possessing plentiful material possessions or not. However, if we define richness and poverty solely in terms of material things, then this is a very one-sided approach. In terms of the possessions or enjoyments of our mind, we also need to uh, uh, talk about this in terms of richness and poverty. It's possible that a person may be extremely rich but uh, very poor at the level of their mind. And it's also possible that a person might be materially speaking very poor but at the level of their minds extremely wealthy. Uh, usually, we don't pay too much attention to our minds. And this is the greatest mistake that we make. As to the nature of our mind, uh, various religions have different kinds of explanations. And uh, science and psychology also have a lot to say about this. However, regardless of what explanations are made, uh, that which we experience in our everyday lives is our mind.
if we um, fail to take care of this mind and if we fail to bring it under proper control, then regardless of whether we are a person of religious faith or not, then our minds will cause us a lot of trouble and difficulty. So it's for this reason that uh, psychological improvement or progress or progress or improvement of our minds is really and truly or is the real and true meaning of progress. Then same thing also pasta then you don't go to the last thing I saw what any more than you took charge of this. And our mind is a component of ourselves. And this is a this is absolutely a fact. And so there are ways uh, of improving it. There are ways of training it. Uh, it's exactly the same logic as training or exercising our physical bodies. But in terms of our physical bodies, once we uh, train them to an extremely high level, then there is nowhere that we can go beyond this. However, there are ways of training our minds that are without limits. Uh, in so far as a person's life is concerned, whether or not it is of value, there are many uh, choices uh, available to people. And there's absolutely no need uh, for anyone to think that if they are without uh, a lot of material possessions or without power, that they are worthless or valueless. We need to have different choices in terms of human lifestyles. It's uh, completely meaningless if we all lead exactly the same kind of lifestyle. And uh, in 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 with the people um, feeling that they don't have any choice, that there is only one choice and nothing else, many people uh, come to ruin. They feel uh, extremely despondent and some even commit suicide. But in fact, in front of every single person is um, a great deal of different paths. Each of these paths presents a choice to us. Uh, it's, we can elect to uh, travel along any of these paths. Uh, with the exception of human beings, um, other forms of uh, sentient life do not have these choices. Uh, for example, animals uh, don't have as many choices as we do. Uh, every, every, for animals, um, everyone uh, has the same kind of lifestyle. But humans have many choices. It's for this reason that in Buddhism we say that a human rebirth is extremely uh, valuable. 
And the reason that we describe it as uh, so valuable is precisely because of the many choices that we have as humans. It's actually extremely easy for us for us to live a life of purpose and meaning. In order to live a life that is uh, rich in meaning and purpose, it is not the case that we necessarily need a lot of power or material possessions. In order to lead a life of happiness, it is not necessary that we have fame, power, wealth, and such things. Happiness, in fact, is a feeling in of or in our minds. So happiness is not our house, happiness is not our car, happiness is not our various uh, electric gadgets, happiness is a feeling in our minds. But does this feeling or emotion in our minds have connection with these things, these external objects? Yes, from time to time it does. But in most cases there's no connection at all. However, these things have an extremely great connection to our experience of suffering. For the very reason that as soon as these things no longer exist, we feel immediate suffering. So as uh, long as we know how to choose, there are in fact many choices available to us in terms of our lifestyles. And in the best and most famous universities around the world, what is being taught is exactly the same mode of living. Uh, different choices and different paths are not being taught. But in actual fact, we do have many uh, different choices and many different paths available to us. So this feeling or emotion of happiness is something that can be derived from many things. However, the, the method, the method in, uh, connected or associated with this is something that we necessarily must learn. However, this method is one that is not taught within any class or lesson in the university. For this reason, it's necessary for us to study for ourselves this method. And these methods exist in the Buddhist tradition. However, that doesn't mean that in order to make use of these methods that you have to be a Buddhist. Of course, if you uh, do wish to have faith in uh, Buddhism, that's fine. Uh, but uh, not deciding not to have faith is also fine too. However, 
We can liken this say to a person that we might not like, but who nevertheless cooks delicious food. Uh, we mm. can still <laughs> eat and enjoy their f- food without necessarily liking the person. Oh, yeah. Then you got a gagame, quarrel, calling his arm and zina. This was all like your good little. If we say that just because we don't like the person, we won't eat their food, then it's our own loss. It's fine for you to not like the person. But uh, by enjoying their food, then you satisfy your own purpose. Uh, so, um, going to conclude the teaching tonight here. Thank you, everyone, so much for listening so carefully. Uh, thank you so much. <laughs> <laughs>